What is incorrectly perceived as a sign of intelligence? Story 1. Cornering people in arguments with bullying tactics and acting like it means they won. We have a word for that in Swedish. Harskartekniker. This isn't really a direct translation. It basically means commanding techniques, although with a much more negative tone. By the way, if you liked my pronunciation of the Swedish word, go check out my channel, Brother Goose, and let me know what you think of my Yamahan Liva rendition. The people that say, oh, sweetie, in an argument, or do your research, I'm not going to spoon feed it to you when someone makes a pretty spectacular claim and you ask them to back it up with a source. I hate this line of thought so much, you see it constantly on Reddit with people like this. I once asked a dude in three separate comments to please link their source after I linked five sources refuting their claim. Each time I was told my sources were bad, and they never provided one themselves. I've been told to stop being lazy and do the research myself in the middle of a conversation I'm actually having while scrolling Reddit on my phone at work. Like, you want to convince me? Do your job. Or, sweet summer child, your point should stand on its own without condescension. Anyone who thinks being condescending makes them correct is not worth your or anyone else's time. Pretty much any political internet personality who goes around debating people is one of these. I know someone who loves to do that with climate change denial. If you say stuff like, too much carbon dioxide is bad, he will corner you privately like a bully and kick arguments and proof at you so fast that you can't respond fast enough, and he'll act like he won. Later on, if you have time, you'd find out that his proof is from dubious sources, but by then, the conversation is over and it'd be too late for a rebuttal. On top of that, he's a local journalist, so once an investigative reporter ripped apart his climate change claims in an article, and I mean ripped apart, the general gist was, he sounds like he knows what he's talking about, but he is absolutely full of doo-doo. It was gorgeous. Oh, and he used big words, too often incorrectly and with hideously incorrect grammar. When people do that to me, I call them out on it after a few times. You're saying you want to have a civil discussion, but I can't even get through a sentence or a fully realized thought before you start jumping on another topic. I'll then proceed to keep telling them I'm not finished when they inevitably keep trying to interrupt me. With these types of people, I think the trick is to curb away from the argument and towards their behavior put them personally on the spotlight and on the defensive. Once you firmly establish that, it's easier to control, and if they get more aggressive about it, throw your hands up and tell them flat out that they are incapable of being reasonable. If all they're trying to do is win, then point out the fact that they're cheating and break the game entirely. If they don't want to play by the rules, then they don't get to play. That's called a gish gallop and is a favorite of pseudoscientists. Story 2 being in charge. Always maintain a healthy skepticism for anyone claiming to be authority, at least till they prove themselves capable. If someone's in an authoritative position, it should be others that praise them and say how good they are, not themselves. I'm the best commenter that's ever been. People always tell me, they say, VP man, that's what they call me. They say, VP, you always leave the best comments. They say that. Ask anyone, they'll tell you. That's why I'm happy to announce that I'm running for Commenter of the Year again in 2024. Let's make comments great again, again. I also have many excellent friends who are very high. I once worked for a company where the VP was the living embodiment of the PETA principle. She had been with the company for over 20 years and somehow got promoted to VP of Marketing. She very clearly had no idea what she was doing and as a result would end up micromanaging to stay busy. And she loved to come around at 4.30 on the Friday before a holiday weekend to say hi, aka make sure no one was leaving early. We were all salaried. This woman was completely incompetent, had no business managing anyone, and didn't understand her duties at all. Yet somehow, she was an executive and made close to $200,000 per year, just by outlasting everyone else. This describes my time working in public education. Many people that reach administrative level positions are wholly incapable. <laughs> incapable. 
You know it's bad when teachers are homeschooling their kids or sending them to private schools rather than enrolling them in the district that employs them. We usually shorten that concept to turds float to the top of the tank. It's a common issue in any large organization. The bigger the organization, the easier it is for someone without any talent or skill to hide their mediocrity and rise to a high position. That's often why you see products decline in quality as a company grows bigger. You'd think that a larger company with more resources could make better quality products, but no. As they grow, there's more people, middle managers usually, that just sit in chairs thinking of dumb ways to cut corners to save money and end up reducing the quality of the products that made that company renowned. Slashing budgets takes no skill compared to making effective decisions that increase productivity. Story 3. Silence. I've been told so many times that I'm thoughtful and a deep thinker, but really, I can't figure out what to say. My girlfriend thinks my silence is me thinking hard or letting her sort out her emotions, but it's really me trying to think of anything to say, but I'm an idiot. Be silent or let thy words be worth more than silence. Pythagoras. Always like this one as well. There's a very good saying about that. I may be paraphrasing, but I've always heard it as, a wise man speaks because he has something to say. A fool speaks because he has to say something. Similarly, it is better to remain silent at the risk of being thought a fool than to talk and remove all doubt of it. Off topic here, but walking above average speed at work makes people think you're a hard worker. I walk around with gloves on, pretending I'm looking for something, And I have a great reputation now because I'm never seen by the managers. The only time they see me is pacing down the corridor looking for some tool. Carry one of those metal box clipboards and people think you're an inspector. Then snap the clip part to make sure they all know who's boss. Story 4. I was surprised when I learned that knowledge isn't necessarily correlated to intelligence. I met a lifelong academic who knew dang near everything about her topic, but just the facts. It's like she was a walking encyclopedia, could cough up any info about her field, but she couldn't really process it that well, or draw conclusions, or apply it to a different topic. It's hard to explain. She had a nice 2 terabyte SSD drive full of info in her head, but she had a substandard CPU. Since then, I've met several people like that, all academics, but I'm not sure that has anything to do with it. It really is interesting the way different people work. Coming from a tabletop role-playing game background, it's like the way intelligence and wisdom are separate. Specific knowledge and common sense are entirely, entirely divorced. I will say, as someone who works closely with academic experts, this is common in academics. Many of the smartest people I've ever met are also kind of dumb. I think that's okay, though. There's absolutely a place for it especially in research and development and academia in general. If you come across a new thing, the walking info dump is your best source of insight on it. Maybe someone else interprets all that together and draws the conclusions, but Dr. Incredibly Specific Human Google is good to have around. Story 5. Scoring an A when I was 14. Scoring an E when I was 24. At a rave. Giving an O to a woman. Freaking this. I was all A's and B's until high school. Occasionally I'd have one C or something, but come high school, started struggling a lot with math. Like ended up needing a tutor for basic high school math. And yet, because I had okay grades into middle school, my parents think I'm super smart and the only reason I could get a C in a class was not trying. Like, for Pete's sake, dude, I'm average. Not smart, not dumb, just average and I'm totally cool with it, but they don't believe me. Ugh, just one more year and college is done. Same dude, graduated seven years ago. I learned that what everyone said was true. Once you get your degree, no one gives a care about your grades. I graduated with a 241, I'm doing just fine. Just do your thing and don't worry about others wanting you to be a genius or thinking you're lazy for simply getting the grades you get. A letter on a piece of paper or on a computer screen never really meant anything to me anyway. It was just a means to an end so I could provide for myself and be happy. And I managed it with plenty of C's and D's sprinkled throughout. Story 6. Being emotionally stunted. 
High IQ does not equal low EQ. You can be a dong and stupid, and you can be smart and charismatic. It's not one or the other. I think a lot of people believe in the myth of natural justice and karma. They think if someone is smart, they must be lacking in other areas. Sort of like if everyone is a character with a fixed amount of base stats that can just be allocated differently from person to person, the reality is that smart people are also often very well-spoken, confident, wealthy, and attractive. And dumb people don't get free points in these areas either. In real life, we roll for stats. Unfortunately, we don't get to use the standard array or point by. I had a buddy once who was so mad that I beat him in a friendly game of pickup tennis. I was a three-sport athlete and in pretty dang good shape. He decided to play tennis his senior year, for reasons I forget. He said to me verbatim, I don't understand how you can beat me. I've been playing for a year and you haven't. I should be one year better than you. Like, bro, real life is not an RPG with character stats. Story 7. Having an opinion on literally everything, especially having the need to share the opinions with everyone they encounter. One of my biggest pet peeves. And on the flip side, immediate respect goes out to anyone who is able to say they don't know enough about the topic to have a solid opinion. I once had a discussion, approaching argument with a guy. It was leaning very much towards the argument, until I happened to mention that my lack of personal experience on the topic meant that I couldn't answer all of his questions fully. He was asking in sincerity. He immediately replied that my admission of ignorance made him respect my opinion more. That made me respect him more. It's that mutual respect that enables us to hear each other out when debating the many issues we tend to disagree on. And thank God, because he's smart AF, and could probably destroy me if we threw civility out the window. The more people who respond like you did, the more civil these discussions can be. Admitting ignorance shows that your priority is the information, not your ego. The other person's response to this shows you what their priority is as well. Story 8. Having money. I know someone who is fairly wealthy. He's worked with several billionaires and other wealthy people. He told me that luck is a much more important factor than people realize. Of course, some people work hard, but most are just exceptionally lucky. Also, 9 out of 10 times, they are jerkwads. There's a lot of research that supports his claim. The actual trait that tracks with wealth the closest is charisma. Edit. To clarify how statistics work, being charismatic doesn't mean you will be wealthy. Being wealthy doesn't mean you are charismatic. But if you could pick one skill to increase your chance of being wealthy, studies indicate it's probably charisma. As someone who has been more successful than my raw intelligence or work ethic might suggest, my main motto in life is, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. Be nice, be polite, smile, attempt to be funny, and be moderately good-looking, even just dressing nice and taking care of hygiene, and you'll be someone people want to be around. If people want to be around you, business opportunities will follow. It's not rocket surgery. Story 9. Being able to memorize. Having a good memory is definitely helpful and often shows intelligence, but just being able to spout facts does not mean you understand them or can think about things critically. This is genuinely infuriating. I'm an engineer and have a lot of colleagues that can dance circles around me with formulas and definitions, but can't design their way out of a cardboard box. I look like an idiot because I can never remember the correct terminology for things because it isn't used colloquially, and I have to Google conversations. It honestly takes both kinds, but the people who can poop random facts tend to be perceived as smarter, typically. Knowledge versus intelligence. Knowledge is what you can stuff into your head. Intelligence is what you can do with that knowledge. At least that's how I look at it. Story 10. Solving a Rubik's Cube. True. I learned how to do it quite fast once I looked on Google. It's just consistent practice until you memorize it. My patience doesn't last long enough to read through the instructions. I did about five turns and gave up. Good to know someone's worse than me. I did six turns before giving up. I can confirm I can solve one, and I'm an idiot. I second this. I solve them, and am also an idiot. I used to mess with people at parties and pretend I was doing complex calculations to solve it. 
I also used to pretend my photographic memory was remembering every move they made while they were scrambling it. People are gullible. It's fun. Highly recommend it. Story 11. I'm living in China right now, and everyone keeps calling me intelligent, as I'm bald and left-handed. Left-handed? Check. Now, if I shave my head, will I become smart? Only if you move to China as well. Apparently, bald equals intelligent now. The heat that smart people's brains give off burns off the hair. Dang, no wonder I've got a full head of hair at 52. The self-burn humble brags, nicely executed. Finally, someone brings some science into this discussion. Larger the forehead, the more the brain power. Hence, it follows that bald equals most brain power. Story 12. Being labeled gifted at a young age. Teens having basic adult understanding becomes geniuses to their parents. It's corny to blame being a gifted student on my own failings in life, so I try not to, but I genuinely think it kind of screwed me up, made me think I was special and could skate through, when in reality, I was not at all special, and later in life, it really bit me in the butt. Story 13. Using big words or complicated language when trying to explain something or talking about a difficult subject. The smartest people can actually make it sound simple. I had a history and civ teacher have us teach a mock lesson as a final grade because if you truly understand something, you can help someone else understand it. Real talk, though, the absolute best way to learn a topic is to teach it to someone else. Story 13. Arrogance portrayed as confidence. A truly intelligent person knows that there's things they don't know and keeps trying to learn. An idiot refuses to acknowledge that there's anything they don't know and fears doing anything that might prove it. If you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. I'll remember this when I lie alone in bed tonight. You are never alone. Have fun sleeping. This was unnecessarily ominous. Story 14. Wealth. Dude, we see stupid people in the news all the time that have more money and assets than we'll ever see. Millionaire influencer makes me lose faith in so much. Story 15. Age. Actually, every toddler I've met was a freaking moron. That's what they want you to think. I love your one-word sentence that everyone can get behind. Older people not listening to younger people, and younger people not listening to older people, because they just don't get it. Story 16. People seem to think if you're rich with a good job, you must be smart. Generally speaking, I've only met one rich person I would consider smart. The rest? Oof. I seriously wonder how some of them passed grade school. Story 17. A cromulent vocabulary. This embiggens me. Slow down, my dictionary is on fire. I chortled gleefully at this repost. Indubitably. Ergo, concordantly, vis-a-vis, -vis, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Riveting braggadocio dressed as irony. Story 18. Talking fast even if you're saying the dumbest crap. The trick is to say enough dumb things that the person you're talking to gets confused as to where it even begins. Story 19. Being Asian. Community had a funny play on this. Hey math club, I'm Asian. Are you Asian? That's pretty racist, man. That wasn't a no. That's homophobic. Story 20. Strong opinions, held with confidence. 80% of podcasts just screamed out in unison. Yeah, 80% sounds about the right number. Maybe even 85%. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.